three no-brainer tactics to leverage content from other Facebook pages, right? And here's the problem that this is kind of dealing with. You don't have any time as it is, right? And if you're like me, and this is what I hear from organizations that I work with, they just don't have time. They don't have time to, oh, geez, we have to come up with content and, you know, post something on Facebook and find something relevant and then measure it and all that. That can be very time consuming. So I sometimes I recommend, hey, why not supplement that with content from other Facebook pages that align with your cause and are also uh, producing really great content? OK, so those two things have to be there. Right. And I'm going to show you just three simple ways to do this, to capture um, day, you know, information from Facebook pages that will be really relevant for your fan base to do that three different ways. The first way is a little bit more complex and then the second two are pretty easy, okay? So the first way is to use Facebook graph and interest lists, all right? And the first thing you do is you create an interest list and this is pretty easy to do. You just go to facebook.com forward slash add this and the URL is right in the slide, okay? I'll post these on SlideShare in just a moment or after the webinar, I'll post these on SlideShare. So that's the link right there, and you click on create list. Very straightforward. If you're the list that we're making, by the way, is a list of pages that a, a lot of our fans like. Okay, a lot of our Facebook fans like specific Facebook pages. We're going to add those pages to this list, uh, and you know, obviously, we're not going to add every single one, but we're going to add the ones that make sense, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. But the first step is to create an interest list because we're actually going to add pages to that list. Then we can source content from those pages. Okay. So that's the first thing you do. You create an interest list. Pages liked by my Facebook fans. Okay. Uh, and then you use Facebook graph to do a search. And the search specifically is pages liked by people who like John Hayden digital marketing or pages liked by people who like the name of your Facebook page. Just put your Facebook page directly in there. You're good to go. Okay. And then what you'll get is you'll get a ranking of pages, the most prevalent pages at the top, followed by the ones that are a little less popular, but the most popular Facebook pages among your specific Facebook page fan base. Okay. So what does this mean? This means that, hey, great. In, the, in my case, Beth Cantor, she is a Facebook, she has a Facebook page that a lot of my fans have also liked. I wonder if I should be pulling content from her Facebook page and sharing it with my fans on that page with my own with my own comment. OK, uh, and so that's the first thing you do. Then when you find pages that make sense, you simply add those to your interest list. You mouse over like. So right in the search results, you'll see the like button for each Facebook page. And then what you do is you simply mouse over the like button. You click uh, add to list and then you can simply pick whatever list you want to add them to. OK, uh, obviously, I have a bunch of different lists here that I've created. You, you might have a couple, too. I have no idea, but you just add them to that interest list that we created in the previous step. OK, and then the next thing you do is you share, obviously, share the most engaging and most relevant posts. So you're not going to share everything from all these Facebook pages you will simply just share the best ones, all right? So let me just show you how this works real time. I'll just go right over to Facebook. Let's see here. Go to Facebook and we will uh, see in my favorites, I have a list right here, pages liked by people that who like, uh, let's see, right here. Yep, pages liked by people who like John Hayden Digital Marketing. Now I can go here during the daytime and I can quickly scan while I'm having a cup of coffee. Wow, look at this, Beth Cantor is sharing this, an updated guide to image size for social media channels. I'm gonna share this, okay? So I click on share and then I simply open up my, um, you know, the share box. I'm gonna pick a page that I manage and uh, I will go down and I will pick John Hayden Digital Marketing um, and I will say more, um, I'll just say from, and I want to tag Beth too. The reason why I want to tag Beth is because 
Facebook's newsfeed now works in a way that is slightly advantageous if we tag someone. Okay, so if I tag Beth, then there might be an opportunity for this post to actually not only appear in front of my fans on my page, but also in front of her fans, even though they have not liked my Facebook page. If there's a pretty good overlap, which we already know that there is because we did this search from Facebook Graph. These are the most popular Facebook pages among my fan base, right? So if I tag that page in a mention like this, I'm likely, I, how likely, I have no idea, but I'm likely to get some airtime in uh, with, you know, in front of her fans, okay? So I click on share and that's it, all right? Pretty simple. Uh, so that's number one, that's the first one. Number two, is to use, um, let me see, that's a double slide. Number two is to use the pages to watch feature. So in Facebook Insights, there's a report, the posts report that you click on. And underneath the posts report, you have an area where it will show you the top posts from pages that you watch. It's not gonna give you all the information about these pages, obviously, but it will show you the engagement rate, you know, the, the level of engagement on these specific posts. And if you wanted to, you could drill down into what the post is simply by clicking on the post right here, okay? Uh, but this is a great source too. So if you, you could use pages to watch, you could use this as, oh, these are our competitors. We wanna see how our competitors are doing compared to us. You could use it, you could also mix it with this approach, these are great pages that consistently produce high quality, relevant content for my Facebook page. I'm gonna put those pages in my uh, pages to watch feature. Then I can go here however often I want to, maybe once every other day, once a day, depends upon the situation, click on this link and then make a comment. Obviously I have to read it and really look at it and see if it's valuable. Make a comment, share it, and then I'm good to go. Okay, so that's number two. And then number three is to get notifications. Now this is for those of you who are uh, a little bit more in the moment and very spontaneous. This is, an, this is not either, this is not an or option. This is an and option, okay? Uh, so in addition to the first two that I described, which was using interest lists, and the second one was using pages to watch, okay? These two are kind of preference if you want to, if you prefer one way or the other, but you're pretty much going to get the similar result with uh, this approach right here, using an interest list and adding lists and then ending up with a huge stream like this, of a whole bunch of Facebook pages. And then eventually you have the news feed where I have all this content right in front of me. This is, uh, you know, I have more to work with. Like clearly there's much more content to, to work with and I can approach it as a Facebook user would, okay? So Facebook users don't see insights. You know, they don't go about looking at their content in this fashion, okay? So, you know, A, th this saves us time because it shows us the number one posts right away or the top performing posts from, from the week, okay? So it shows us this right away, great, that's useful, um, but it's a limited set, right? So we have five posts maybe, right? So I'd rather go through the newsfeed and I'd rather say, what catches my attention? When I'm scanning through here, because this is exactly what all the Facebook users do. This is what we all do when we use Facebook. We simply scan down and look at the stuff and say, oh, there's something that's got my attention, of course. Um, and then we can simply share it, right? So it's good to kind of get a sense of what's gonna grab your attention because people look at the newsfeed um, visually, obviously. They're, they're not really reading stuff. They're kind of scanning and, oh, here's something that stands out. Here's another something that stands out, okay? Um, and, I've, you know, we want to dig down a little bit deeper than that, but the first pass is looking at what kind of, what captures your attention, okay? So that is, uh, so to supplement those two notifications, that allows you to have notifications show up within your own personal Facebook notifications. So again, I have a screenshot here, but if we go back to Facebook and I'm logged in just like me, regular old John using Facebook, I can click on my notifications. I don't have any because my friends don't like me today, but then I can look at and see, oh, wow, here's, uh, here's an interesting post from Social Media Examiner. Here's something from Pamela Grow. 
and you know so forth. So I can quickly do that, but it's much more span spontaneous. The downside of all this in terms of sharing the content, uh, well, there's one tiny, teeny tiny little downside. And that is when you share a post from a page, you can't schedule it. You can't say, oh, I wanna share this post like I did by clicking the share link and then schedule it. You can't do that. So I also recommend that you be creative about mixing up what you find. Okay, so for example, if I go back to our example here with Beth, I shared that directly on my Facebook page, but I could also go to the article itself and I can read it a little bit more. I might have my own spin on it. There might be another image that might be more useful. So for example, this, maybe I might wanna break down some of these images and, and put, make a, create a Facebook photo album, or maybe even distribute these images over time. Maybe schedule these posts, couple different images over a week and saying, hey, Here's a YouTube header image, you know, for as an example, um, you know, check it out, see the full infographic at Post Planner, right? So that get, gives me an excuse to basically chop up something and use it for what five or six, five or six different Facebook updates I can have scheduled over the next couple of weeks, and it's all leading back to this this uh, post right here. Okay, so uh, I think that is it. I could go longer, but I don't want to. And we're going to open it up for Q&A. All right. So let's see here. Oh, we have one, one question. Um, <clears throat> Norman says pages to watch equal pages you like. Actually, no. Pages to watch are just pages. Any page you want to add, you can add it. It's, it's kind of a, um, it's, I guess Facebook is seeing it as a way to do benchmarking, okay? So if you're, um, you know, if you're a, uh, let's see, you know, like a breast cancer foundation, right? And you say, geez, you know, what are other breast cancer foundations doing? Oh, well, these are the other, you can look at it one of two ways. Again, these are our competitors. We're going to beat them up or, hey, these people can really teach us something. So let's try and see which ones we should be analyzing. And in fact, Facebook is even suggesting, um, something or you could just simply do a search or go back to that graph search that i did before right so pages liked by people who like you can tell i'm using two fingers the ellie fund so these are all the pages liked by the ellie fund so what am i going to do i'm going to say uh museum of, museum of fine arts we have a great relationship with them going back a long time i'm going to add them to this list Okay, and you simply click on here, click on add to interest list, and then, and then you're good to go. So it's case by case on the use. Uh, now, in terms of insights, I think you can only see five at a time. So if we go back into insights here, let me just quickly go over here. And top post from pages. Here we go. Perfect. So these are the, it just, it's going to show you five and that's it. Okay, so you're not getting everything. You're just getting five, but you are saving time figuring out which posts are the good ones from these pages facebook is telling you right here top posts from pages you watch great let's share these posts right uh, i'd rather have more of a data sets or a more you know comprehensive list so i like the let me see i'm sorry i'm gonna click over here i like having it all in one little stream right here okay so norman that was a long answer to a very short question Hopefully there are more questions. Let's see, ooh, great, now we have a few questions. Okay, great. Ah, we have lots of questions. Okay, uh, people, were, I thought people were too shy. So I'm just gonna read the question and then answer it. If I need to go online, I will. We share Facebook duties across offices. Uh, this is Michelle, thanks Michelle. Michelle is asking, um, we share Facebook duties across offices. Is there any way to, uh, wait, is there any way to do these lists, et cetera, at the page level rather than our personal Facebook. Um, there is, and the, it is, the answer is the pages to watch feature and Facebook pages. There's also something, if you're not familiar with it, Post Planner has a feature like that. Um, in fact, um, well, let me just show you really quickly. Post Planner is something that I use a lot. It's, it's, a, it's, a, great, it's a great app. They have a free version, you know, so you can always check it out and see if it's for you. But one thing that they do have is they have, uh, let's see, viral photos. I can even look at, I can create lists of pages 
right? I can add, this is just, this is standard post planner stuff that comes with it. I wouldn't, you know, crazy photos. Oh, what's the difference between crazy and funny and engaging and awesome? I mean, I don't know. I don't know who, who's naming these, but um, I would say, you know, I don't know, funny people, funny photos. I can pick on, I can pick a specific page and then it will show the most viral. Oh, I guess this page is not that active, huh? SME cards, I can look at that. I guess there's a failure here. Okay, this is not going too well. All right, anyhow, Post Planner allows you to do a lot of that uh, and more at the at the page level, okay? So, uh, you're welcome, Norman. Uh, Charlotte, my good friend Charlotte, when you use a page for ideas, uh, but not just link it to, um, so you can schedule, do you usually credit the original source? It's a good idea to credit the original source. Yeah. Uh, mention the page in an update. Um, if you, it depends on what you do with it though. If you are just sharing the post directly, it's, you know, it's a good idea to mention that page. Um, it depends upon the relationship with, with you though. If you, if, if you don't really know the organization, they shared an article and then you're investigating it and then you take it to a new level and you really explore something and you write something, maybe even a blog post, then you're going to share that blog post. So it depends upon the resources that you have and, and, uh, the, you know, the level that you want to get into in the relationship that you have with the page, you know? So if someone points out an article and says, Hey, this is a good article. And then you go in and you present your own take on that article i think you know whether you're a you know um assign attribution depends upon you know it was it just like something that randomly showed up on their twitter feed and then you investigated it and then you wrote this whole article i don't know uh it depends upon the situation i think because you know if you really if you really went all the way with it we would have to assign attribution to everyone all the time every time uh, Linda is asking, can pages make interest lists or only profiles? Only profiles can make interest lists, but you can add pages to that pages to watch. Uh, Facebook, I think pages used to have a favorites feature, but they got rid of it. Let me just dig in here a little bit in the settings. Page info, page roles, suggested edits, featured. You can add, you can add, you know, pages, lists of pages that you like. You know, you can, so in other words, you can like other pages as a page, right? So Facebook pages can like other pages when you log in as a page and you can take those, some of those pages, not all of them, add them to a featured list and then me, you know, display that on your Facebook page. But this, that's not really going to help you that much. It's better if you log into Facebook yourself and then you go to your interest list, which is right at, at Facebook. And then you're, you're going through your own newsfeed. There's no reason why. You know, there's not a security issue. There's not a, not a security, but a privacy issue. Okay. Cause when I click on share, I'm sharing on my page. I'm not sharing on my timeline, my timeline. I could, if I wanted to, but I don't want to, I'm always going to share on my page. That's what I want to do. And then I want to pick the page that I manage or, you know, whatever page you want to share it with and then go from there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is there a good, uh, Paula is asking, let me just go back here. Paula is asking, is there a good practice to balance shared content versus original content, such as an ideal ratio? There's not an ideal ratio, uh, and it does depend upon resources, but I would definitely include a mix of shared content in your, um, in your, in your content strategy. And when I say shared, I mean um, where you're just sharing. It's literally just a share, okay? Just like I did with Beth Cantor. I'm not, that's different from me digging into it, digging into the article and putting my own spin on it or chopping up the infographic. Like I mentioned before, that's more owning it and then creating content or mixing it up or mashing it up. Some people say mashing. That used to be a word. I don't really hear mashing anymore, but, um, so, uh, the ratio, I mean, action sprout, they wrote a blog post or they did a presentation where they said 80, 20, you know, focus on sharing, or curating 80% of the time, and then 20% of the time, create your own content. And I think that that makes a lot of sense for, especially small, medium-sized nonprofits, when you have where you have very little resources as it is. So, um, sharing, um, you know, when we when we look at that, the 80-20 rule on that, I wouldn't limit the 80% to only sharing, just outright sharing, as demonstrated with Beth Cantor's post. I would put 
for 80%, I would say, um, you know, content that's tweeted that you might remix, like a lot of remixing goes into that 80%. uh, And then just creating pure content from your own is, is the 20%. That's, that's, you know, what I've seen, but it does depend upon the the, uh, organization and what the, what the goals are. If they want to be a thought leader in their space, and they really want to educate people and be the leader, kind of the tip of the spear for educating, then they're going to be creating a lot of their own original content, infographics, videos, and stuff like that. So that's a, that's a totally different animal than, say, an animal shelter who's, um, you know, well, they have a different situation because they're posting tons of photos anyhow, okay? They have a, they have a you know, good situation or an easy situation in terms of getting content. It's not like they're, oh, what are we going to talk about today? Well, there are dogs like right behind you. You could just take a picture. Uh, so Lacey um, is asking, when I share posts from other pages, I use the buffer uh, posting option in Facebook to be able to schedule those shared posts. Have you found this as effective as directly sharing through Facebook? I don't know. I have not looked at that. Um, and I actually haven't shared it that way. I'd be curious, Lacey, if you've noticed a difference, you would be able to tell pretty quickly if you go into Facebook Insights, okay? Um, but generally sharing, if someone's going to share something and but schedule it, usually they're going to dig into that article and make it their own and include a link. They're going to basically schedule it as a link post. Um, so I don't use Buffer for Facebook, just that I just don't use it. I use Post Planner. Post Planner has scheduling of links and all that other fun stuff, but it doesn't, it, Post Planner doesn't allow you to share directly. So that's probably why I don't know that much about that topic, about the buffer topic, okay? Uh, Jillian, oh, oh, hi Jillian. Is there anything I need to enable um, to have the option to watch pages? No, you just have to have, be an admin on the page and have at least insights analyst access, and then you can, you can add those pages, all right? Michelle says, thanks. Charlotte says, thanks. Just what I wanted to know. Mary, can you tell if you, wait, uh, can you tell if you are picking up more likes by doing this? That's a great question. And you can find that out right in Insights. So Insights won't show you, let me see here, go to Insights, and we look at a post. So the, the amount of detail that you see on a specific post, just to give an idea, is this amount of information. So it will say, unlike page, it's not saying like page either. So don't, don't be afraid. In other words, it, all this inform nothing's happening here because we just posted it, okay? There's uh, one link click. So someone clicked the link. There's seven other clicks. So clicks, there might be someone, um, da-da-da, post clicks, click, see more. Um, usually when someone likes a page, <clears throat> it's a result of viral um, sharing. So someone's, you know, someone likes this, or shares it or comments on it, and then their friends, then they're going to see this page. Because keep in mind, most people who are going to see this update, unless they are, um, you know, unless they're doing an ad, like take ads out of it, most of them are going to be fans anyhow. So they're not going to want to like, there's no reason to measure that because they've already liked the page. Okay. Well, we're talking about viral reach, right? So, um, but, you know, again, liking, you know, just to, just to, take this to a different level, I guess. Um, liking is not, or I'm sorry, fans, the number of fans and the number of likes that your page gets is not as important as people engaging with your content, okay? Because you could get fans. Getting fans is is pretty easy, okay? Um, there, are, You could pay for them. You can um, do some type of giveaway, a sweepstake. You could do a lot of different things to get fans, but engaging people that's really the hard part and i i would argue that that's you know that's the that's the harder thing that's what you, that's what you should be focusing on when you publish a post on your facebook page you shouldn't be thinking well how many people are going to like our facebook page if we post this content that's a that's a peripheral benefit but that's not the main reason why we're doing it that's not our goal that's not our objective or intention Okay. Norman's asking, uh, can you think, oh, do you think it's wise to add your own spin on content? Absolutely. Um, I've gotten this advice to do this more on Twitter. Yes, absolutely. So even if you do a simple share, like I did with uh, Beth, you know, I put my own spin on it. 
I was pressed for time because we're in a webinar, but I would normally go in here and read this and then add, hey, this is really cool stuff, but it would still be a share. Um, if it's not already apparent, the benefit of this is actually kind of sets up my relationship with Beth because I'm kind of doing Beth, a f not a favor, but this is good for Beth. You know, Beth gets more exposure to her Facebook page. When I share this, I'm basically exposing my entire f fan base or not, not my entire fan base, but you know, anyone who sees my posts, they're being introduced to Beth Cantor. I'm introducing Beth Cantor to my audience. That's what, really what it is. And that's a benefit. So it's really kind of, it's a, it's a, um, a factor in nurturing that relationship, a small factor, but it's still, it's still a factor. Okay. So that's how I think about sharing. Okay. Otherwise I could just grab this article, go in, look at it, read it, post it, post a link, maybe a couple of days later, and then I'd be done with it. You know, um, I like the sharing because it does kind of recognize it creates this uh, reciprocity. So then people start sharing your page posts, especially if the you know, if the pages are similar. All right. Let's see. Um, okay. So Mary is asking, that is true. Beautiful. Okay. Jillian. Oh, a little bit more from Jillian. Uh, follow up question from Jillian. Um, I'm a page admin, but I don't have the same box you do um, that had the ad pages you watch. And I don't have, I also don't have pages watch tab in insights, huh? So you should be, if you're an admin on a Facebook page, you should have that. You know, you might want to, I, I, it could be a bug, but you might want to add, um, uh, if you want to email me a screenshot, you can, and we can kind of bring this offline, but that sounds like it's, I'm just curious why that would be happening. I, I, I don't know, but if you want to email me, no problem at all. Okay. Question from Charlotte. And then I think we have, and I think that's it. So one quick question. Charlotte is saying, when you share, uh, wait, when you share, do you sometimes ask by email, maybe for returning the favor? Uh, I wouldn't, I would be really careful with that. All right. Because again, ultimately we're coming down to people and, you know, think about it that way. Think about it that way. If you did someone a favor and then you reminded them, Hey, I just did you a favor. Huh? Wink, you know, wink, wink, you know, when, when am I going to get mine? You, you never want to come across that way. Um, another way to do it, or, you know, a, a, a way of achieving the same goal, but doing it differently is saying, um, hey, FYI, I shared the update, you know, really great article. Thanks a lot. You know, it, you know, and again, all this depends upon the organization. You're not just going to send a blind email to someone, you know, they might feel awkward. Sharing happens all the time. You don't have to email people. Um, it does depend upon the relationship. If you, if it's a big page with a big fan base and you have a really great relationship with them and you, and you really would greatly appreciate uh, a returned favor, then yeah, I would send an email and say, Hey, um, we just shared this update. It was really useful. Thanks a lot. How, how's it going? We should have coffee soon. You know, that, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, uh, man, uh, actually Mary is asking about admin or manager. It would be the top level. So the manager level and Facebook has changed the roles in uh, for admins too. They've changed the names. I'm sorry. They're not calling them admins anymore. They're calling them uh, roles actually. So roles, and then we have admin level, we have editor, admin, editor, moderator, advertiser, analyst, make the level an admin, you know, leave it as an admin level. That way they can see everything. Uh, so I hope that helps Jillian, but then again, send me a quick screenshot. No problem at all. Charlotte says, uh, by email. Yes. Yep. So that's it. Those are all the questions. I really appreciate all your time. I will put together the slides and the video uh, for Monday's email and have a great week. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye.